Welcome to Whiskey and Weapons guys, uh, back again. We've got something a little bit different for you this week. We're going to show you what you need to make yourself a nice pea fishing rig. This one's going to be the two hook flapper. So I'll just talk you through what I've got here. We've got some crane swivels. I've got two different sizes. Um, I'll tell you what they are as we go through. I've got a lead link clip or a fast link. I've got two different types and I'll talk to you about those. Some line crimps. We've got our sinker, grip of lead. Snips, pliers. We're going to use 30 pound amnesia. Is that 30 pound? 11.4 kilo? No, it's not. It's about 25 pound amnesia. We're going to use 25 pound amnesia for the hook snoods and we're going to use 60 pound asso shock leader for our main body. So we'll start this off. And for the main body, I'm not going to give you exact measurements, but what I generally do is I'll take it in my left hand, the end of the line, and I'll roll it along and I'll come to my right shoulder. So I would say you're getting just a touch over a metre, maybe it's a metre and 120, something like that. So we're going to use that as our main body. Right, now I'm going to show you, the first thing I've put on is going to be one of these. Now this is a 220 pound brake and strain swivel, it's a crane swivel. Now they're a little bit expensive these ones, they are better, 220 pounds maybe a touch overkill but we'll see so that's what we're going to be using 220 pound so i'm going to tie that on the end first so this is the knot we're going to use look so you want to come through and give yourself about i don't know three and a half inches overhang you go around the main line three times that's one two three then you tuck back through this little loop here and you pull it round. Now we're going to go back through this again three times. One, two, three. Okay, so that's three times through. Now at this point you don't want to just pull this knot up because it's dry. What will happen is all, it'll weaken your line and your chance to either lose the weight when you're casting or it'll snap when you've got a decent fish and nobody wants that. So bit of saliva here bit on there pull it up nicely give it a good wobble get hold of it with these pointy nose pliers and as you can see that's pulled up nice there so what we've got here is basically I don't know if you can see that on the screen very well there but we've got the line coming in and going back out of the same hole. Nice neat knot. Now I learned that when I was a kid and I haven't seen many people use it uh, up until recently when I came across another channel, Sandman's Tackle Time. Not bad. Right, so that's our uh, crane swivel on the end there, 220 pound brake and strain. Now this is the type of link what I'm going to use. I used to use these. These are the links what you put your lead on with. But what happens sometimes is the way that they're shaped you can tend to pick up on other people's lines what are being snapped in the water and you end up pulling loads of rough gear in or losing your gear. So this is a new type. I'm going to give those a go. And they're quite simple to put on. Just roll it in like that. He says they're quite simple to put on as he chucks it on the paper. Right. So it just slides in the end there like that. In. Round. And I'll show you put the weight on after. Right, so the order of things to go on here, because we're going to put two hook snoods on, a high one and a low one. So the first thing we're going to have to put on is one of these little line crimps. So that slides on first, then we're going to put these on, these are uh, called attractant beads. These are Shakespeare ones, these, purchased from Fish and Republic. So we're going to go for a crimp, a bead. Then we're going to go back down to these. These are slightly smaller crane swivels, but they're still a hundred and I think they're a hundred and eighty pound break and strain. Yeah, not too bad. All right, so we've got crimp bead swivel. We want another bead of the same colour, otherwise my OCD will go crazy. So another bead, then another crimp. So that's going to be your bottom snood. Then we're going to need another crimp. And another bead, and I just like to use a different colour. You can use whatever you like here, really. There's no set rules. And another swivel. Another bead. Followed by your last crimp. Right. So 
that's on there. Now at the top of it, we're going to put the other crane swivel. And again, this is another 220 pound brake and strain one. So I'll show you that crazy nut again. Most people I say use the half blood. It's similar, but I just like this one. I've, I've done it for a long time. So you go through and you go around three times. That's one, two, three. And you have to tuck through your little loop. And that creates this loop. Then we're going to go through that three times. One, two, three. Right. And again, a bit of a saliva on there. We're going to get that pulled up with the pliers. Careful not to damage your swivel or the line. So when that pulls up, see that's pulled up nice and tight there. Spot on. So we'll just nip that end off there. I like to leave about a quarter of an inch tag end in if I can. Right, so now what you've got here, this is the bottom end. So we've got a, a crimp, bead, swivel, bead, crimp, crimp, bead, swivel, bead, crimp. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the distance that our bottom snood is going to be off the floor. Now I like to go for about that, about three inches. Personal preference, but each to their own. Now this is the careful bit. You do not want to nip these too hard. I like to do two points and you don't nip them too hard otherwise you're just going to damage the main body of your line. So we slide everything up to make that. Your two beads, your swivel in between and your next crimp. And then we're going to do the same again and we're going to just nip that twice. One, two. Not too hard. So about three inches. Now you can do this and double it over because what we want to do is we want to get the the top about the same so if you just hold about there i'm going to nip that twice one two then we're going to slide everything up to make that where's that little crimp at it's flying down the line away from us there we go right so we're going to bring everything up to make that and we're going to do the same we're going to get it right up and I just want two little nips on there. So what you've got now, you've got your crane swivel at one end, crimp bead swivel bead crimp, same again down here, followed by crane swivel and a fast link. So hook snoods. For that we're going to use 30 pound, no 25 pound break and strain amnesia. And it's decent stuff this. And the length I use well, I generally give me a bit, myself a bit more than I need from arm to, uh, fingertip to shoulder. That's all you want. So I'll do that and I'll double it so that we have the same length all the way through on both snoods. And what we're going to do is we're going to nip it there. Right. Nip that in half there, and we should have two snoods that are close enough. So I'll put that one over there for now. I'm going to tie our top one. And again, it's the same knot. I'm not going to tell you how to do it this time, I'm just going to get on and do it. Like I say, I've never seen anybody use this for a long time. I got taught when I was a kid. The only person I've seen use it is um, a guy called Paul Edwards, and he's got a fantastic uh, YouTube channel. And it's called Sandman's Tackle Time. We'll put a link to that somewhere for you to have a look. He shows you how to make your own components, like your rotten bottoms um, and your rigs. And he shows you decent fishing tips. So give him a check out. Bit of saliva. Get that pulled up nicely. And then again, we're just going to nip that off. That's snow number one. Second one. So, through your crane swivel, get yourself a little bit out there, around three times. Like I say, the stuff we've bought is from Fishing Republic, I'm sure you can get it from many places, but we find them to be decent price. We find that uh, they have just about everything you could possibly need. Oh, there's the dog coming in.
just going to nip that off. All right, like I say, I always leave myself about a quarter inch tag end. So that's basically your rig there without the hooks on it. And this is how we're going to attach our weights. Like I say, nice grip lead. Not set, but get that wrapped in there. And that's what we've got. So for your hooks, I like to use Sakuma Mantas. And I'll either use a number one or a number two. Like I say, this one, cracking for catching whiteies, coddling, and with the bottom one, uh, bottom snowed being on the floor, you'll pick up uh, the occasional flatty as well, which is nice. So these are Sakuma Mantis uh, hooks, and they are absolutely fantastic. They're razor sharp, absolutely cracking. Again, I think they're about five pound for thirty hooks, something like that. Not get cheap, but spot on. Right. So with this first one, this is our top, and you don't want you see me snowed stops there, so it can't quite hook under this one. It's about four inches difference. Like I say, you can have it a little bit longer, but you don't want to go too much. So basically, I generally don't put my uh, me hooks on until I'm at the pier or whatever. I don't like to. Just stops the rig getting tangled up, but again, I'm just going to show you this for demonstration purposes. Right, a little bit of saliva on there. Now this is where you've got to be careful because you do not want to get that buried in your hand. It's pulled up nice and tight. And we're just going to nip off the excess. Now this is one what uh, I learned actually off Paul Edwards on his videos on Sandman's Tackle Time. If you just leave a little uh, tag on down there, eight mil maybe. That might be a little bit long actually. What you do, once you slide your worm through and up onto your uh, line, it stops your, your worm bundling up at the bottom of the hook. So, nice little tip there. Okay, so just to put the bottom snowed on now, just this last one. Like I say, there's nothing like catching on rigs that you've made yourself. You know, it just gives you that little bit of extra sense of accomplishment, shall we say. I also find that when you buy shop bought rigs, the hooks aren't as good. I mean, you can always buy the rig and uh, put your own hooks on, but why not have a go when it's so easy? You know, it's so much cheaper to, to make your own rigs. Again, just pull that knot up nice and neat. I'm going to just leave that little tag end on there for sliding on for the worm. Right, now that's it. So, what we've got at the bottom, your grip lead, followed by your fast link and your swivel. That allows the lead to spin freely and it doesn't tangle your line. Then you've got your setup there for your, your bottom hooks node. And then you see it. This is why I don't leave them uh, leave hooks on. That's your bottom hooks node with a Sakuma Manta 2 on. Then your top hooks node. And then you just connect that onto your uh, American snap link at the top. Crack and rig. Works every time. I mean, we've got videos up, you'll see we were out on Wednesday. Um, it's one of our videos that's just been put up. Catching white and all day long on these. Have a go. Nice and easy. We'll be back next week and we'll give you some more tips and we'll, uh, we'll knock a few more rigs for you. I hope you enjoyed it.